let's stay at the position and move on to our next sleeper steal value. Jamison Crowder. Um, Alex and I have him consensus 64th overall. Uh, ESPN has him all the way down at 94. His, his current ADP is insulting. If I'm being completely honest, uh, he is currently going at 134th overall or the beginning of the 12th round. So he is free basically like he's not free cause you still have to draft him in the 12th. And most people have 15 round drafts. And so like 13 of the 15 are positional players. So before you pick your kicker in defense. So, I mean, the second to the last round of when most people are drafting their actual like players is basically free. Um, I, yeah, Jamison Crowder excites me and I've luckily had him for the, you know, on and off for the last couple of years. Um, after, uh, Sam Darnold came back from mono last season, Crowder was targeted 94 times, which was the 14th most among all wide receivers from weeks, uh, what five through 17, like that's 14th and you can get the 14th most targets in the 12th round. Yeah. And for, uh, so af- after week nine, his targets were nine, six, eight, four, nine, seven, 11, eight, and 10. He was good. Wow. He was getting targeted all the time. Yeah. A- and in games, Darnold played, he averaged uh, just over eight targets a game. How many targets do you think DJ Chark averaged per game? I'll say under that. He averaged DJ Chark averaged under eight targets a game. Uh, Amari averaged seven and a half targets a game. And Jamison Crowder scored six touchdowns with Darnold. So the, the end zone reliability is there. Um, with Jamison Crowder as well. I think he could definitely finish as a wide receiver too, given a full season with Darnold. So Alex, what do you think about uh, Jamison? Yeah, I agree. Um, So the Jets were right in the middle of the NFL, uh, 15th in percentage of passing plays. Um, They ran just about 60% of their um, plays were passes. Just as a friendly reminder, I mean, Jamison Crowder was the 31st ranked wide receiver last year in in half PPR leagues. Um, He had the 16th most catches in football. He had the 15th most targets. So something just doesn't jive there. Like why, you know, 31st, but 15th in targets, 16th in catches. Now, his his average depth for part for target is like one of the lowest in the leagues. And that's okay, But. Like part of the reason why he ended up so low was because, I mean, those three games when when Sam Darnold didn't play was Luke Falk and Trevor Simeon throwing him the ball, <laughs> and I mean in those games, talk about blah, Crowder balls. had yeah I mean he had four catches for forty yards the first week and you're like okay like maybe he's salvageable at least a little bit, and then the two weeks after that two catches for twenty five and two catches for ten. And so he salvaged that into still being the 30 phase, 31st ranked wide receiver, so a solid wide receiver three, a, an OK flex player like he was fine. He was I mean, I I was playing him in one of my leagues last year because he, he was fine. So to your point, game started by Sam Darnold. He averaged 11.3 points per week, um, and that's in a, a half PPR league. Extrapolate that over all 16. Uh, and that would have been good enough for wide receiver 21 last year. So, like, he'll be fine as long as Darnold stays healthy, and I have no reason to not think he will. Um, downsides, uh, Adam Gase is his coach, so that kind of sucks. Um, bummer. Um, he, he did have six <laughs> touchdowns his last nine games, so he finished the year strong. And just from, like, a competition of target standpoint, they have Brashad Perriman. They drafted Denzel Mims out of Baylor. Um, I'm not banking on any rookies being productive at all this year because... I'm not scared of Perriman either. No, yeah, I mean forever and underachiever as as a Raven and had what two weeks uh, with the Bucks at the end of last year once everybody got hurt. Yeah, yep. So, I mean, 
I, I think there's just a lot of value here. There's no reason why you should be getting drafted as late as he is. He's still the Jets number one wide receiver. And if you can get a Jets or who cares if it's even the Jets, if you can get a number one wide receiver on any team that late, that is a potential like an easy That's criminal value. Yeah, it's just it doesn't make any sense. So I yeah. mean, and, and the NFL is becoming more and more dependent on kind of those slot players. So like if he can, he's always been good with, you know, him and Kirk Cousins had a good rapport and him and Star Sam Darnold were fine last year. He's, so I, I think, I think the values there um, real quick on his playoff schedule. It's at Seattle, which is actually a fine matchup at LA Rams and home against the Browns. So those are, those are pretty, pretty the Rams. Okay. I would want to avoid Jalen Ramsey, but yeah, but he doesn't play the slot, though. True, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, right. But right. So if Jalen Ramsey is lined up against them, you're doing you shadowing cut. or whatever. Then, but yeah, yeah you, you, right. You just got to be aware of what kind of defense they've been running. We don't know what it's going to look like with Wade Phillips gone from L.A. So, yeah, well, like just kind of pay attention. But I mean, th that's otherwise a fine playoff schedule. Um, they should be playing from behind in some of those games. So the more passes, more targets and Jamison, I call him Jamison money Crowder uh, only because <laughs> there's a CPA. So I'm a public accountant for those of you who are listening that don't know that. And there's a CPA firm in Alabama called Jamison money farmer. Um, and so I just call Jamison <laughs> money Crowder. Uh, I don't know. It's sorry. There you public go. Accounting joke. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Jameson Crowder, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with him. Um, especially he, he went in the 10th round of our mock. I believe I took him, but if he's not going until the 13th and he's sitting there in the 11th, like it's okay. He's a number one wide receiver, um, on that team. You should be taking him. McCall Hardman went before him in our draft. Like that was, that's just not, that should not be a thing. Like he's the, he's at best no, like the, the third target in that offense um, on, a, on a good day. Like, and to get the number one target, even in a, you know, a less desirable offense, we'll call it. Maybe I mean, they, four, I mean, maybe fourth because you got Watkins. Yeah, you exactly. Got Kelsey, I wasn't, and you got, I wasn't counting yeah. Watkins. Right. But uh, I mean, Crowder does get to play the Dolphins twice. So there's that. That's like, actually that's actually not good because they have like the two highest paid cornerbacks in football and their their defense is gonna be really good, honestly. This year. We'll see. Last year they were yep. not. But no, they weren't, but they I mark it down. They the Dolphins are gonna have a top ten defense this year in fantasy. Top ten? Yeah. I'll take the under top on 10. that. All right, I'll I'll throw that on our bets that we have going. Yeah, top ten, top ten fantasy defense wow. Miami Dolphins this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Put that on the board for sure. Um, That's all right. Our, our our first one is you having Keyshawn Vaughn versus uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. It's fine. Yeah, you lost that one uh, because we're really high on on Mr. Ronald Jones. So let's yeah, nice segue. We are professionals. Hashtag we are professionals. 